The hardest part about working in tech is how quickly things can change. Let's go build a monolith. Actually, microservices are more efficient. No wait, those are really complicated. Why don't we build a monolith instead? Trends in software rise and fall so fast. It's really hard to keep up. Here's a tip that I would have given myself 10 years ago when I was just starting on this journey. Build a personal knowledge management system. And you can do this with many different tools on the market, but the one that I personally use is one called Obsidian. A personal knowledge management system is a collection of tools and methodologies that we use to process information. If you're working in tech, then chances are you're getting paid for what you know and what you do with that information. So formalizing how we learn and build things makes our work a lot easier. So what is Obsidian? Obsidian is a free app that many call a note-taking app, which is technically true, but I think it's more than that. It's more like your second brain. Some of the things that I like about it are that it lets you store your notes locally and you can then decide to back it up on the cloud if you want to. And it stores it in plain text, which is really good for longevity. So even if Obsidian itself goes away or the developers stop working on it, you're never not going to be able to access the notes that you've worked on. It's also really extensible, so you can create plugins in JavaScript. There's a very good, thriving ecosystem of every kind of plugin that you can think of, really. Obsidian has really responsive developers, and it is not an open source app, but it is free. And then there are other things that you can add on that you pay for for extra convenience, such as being able to publish your notes online with a click of a button. So you might be wondering, what makes Obsidian different from other note-taking tools like Room Research or Notion or Evernote, all tools that I've used quite heavily in the past? I think it comes down to two things. One is the philosophy, and the second is the execution. Obsidian is based on the idea that a loose structure of tightly interconnected ideas fosters learning and creativity. So if you have too much of a structure, like if you think in terms of folders and hierarchies all the time, Time, then your thinking becomes really weak and cliched. And if you don't have strong links between ideas, then you might never see the bigger picture or you might never create something entirely new by combining two things that are seemingly disparate. Obsidian's features also support this philosophy. For example, they work around a system of backlinks where all you have to do is type two brackets and you're already linking to another page, whether that exists or not. Then you can visualize these links in a graph view, or if you open up a note that you've linked to, you'll be able to see the notes that you link to it from. And this happens even if you haven't explicitly linked it. So you'll see here that there are both linked and unlinked mentions that are showing up on your notes. This increases the likelihood of you stumbling accidentally across connections that you may not have made on your own. For example, I was just jotting down some notes on strategies on this board game called Viticulture when Obsidian began to show me some unlinked mentions. Apparently, I'd used the word worker as in worker placement when referring to a board game, but I'd also use the word worker in the context of computers and how to improve application performance by increasing the number of workers or having them work in parallel. So that was an interesting connection that I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have made myself. Obsidian lets you add tags to your notes so that you can group them that way, or you can also add metadata to your notes by putting them in the front matter. So all of these things, backlinks, linked and unlinked mentions, tags, and metadata are ways for you to rediscover things that you've written before in new contexts. I mainly use Obsidian for three things. I use it to input information, process it, and then output it. I consume data from a variety of different sources. So in the input stage, I collect all of those, whether they're videos or articles or blog posts or books or podcasts. And I use a service called Readwise to highlight those insights from that content and then automatically send it over to Obsidian. This is a free integration, although Readwise itself is not a free service. Sometimes the input comes in the form of meeting notes. So while I'm in a meeting with my colleagues, I'll often take notes in Obsidian, and that becomes an input into the process as well. 
The company that I work for happens to also store a lot of internal documentation and external documentation in Markdown files in a GitHub repository, which is perfect for Obsidian because I can just open that entire folder as an Obsidian vault. And that means I can kind of use Obsidian as an IDE. It provides a better interface for me for interacting with that documentation and it means that when I push those commits back to the repository, my colleagues never need to know that I used Obsidian because it's all stored in Markdown. Because I'm a developer advocate, I also keep track of feedback about the products and services that we provide and I tag them so that I know which area of the application it relates to. Then in Obsidian, I can click on these tags and quickly be able to pass on that feedback to the relevant parts of the company. Processing all of the content that comes at us is probably the most difficult and time-consuming part, but it's also probably the one that creates the most value because this is the stage where we actually learn about new things or new technologies. The way that I do it is every day I set aside a time, for me that's 9 p.m., when I feel the most mentally alert and energized. I'm a bit of a night owl. And then I go through everything that Readwise has put into Obsidian for me for the day and I start to think about summarizing them in my own words and also creating notes in my own system to account for what I've learned. This is when I start to piece together where it all fits in in the bigger picture of my brain or my personal knowledge management system. For example, here's a page on chaos engineering that I've been slowly working on over time. You can also think of this stage as building your own search engine. So here's my page for K6. I joined K6 almost a year ago now and I've had to build up my knowledge about the tool over time. So now I have a lot of things about how to do things in K6 that are really good for me when I need to remember how you do something so that I can quickly show others how to do it. And the last step in this process that Obsidian helps me with is output. Because in my opinion, you don't really know that you've learned something until you've created something new with it. One of the coolest features about Obsidian is it actually has slides built in. It uses Reveal.js and you can create a simple presentation just by using these dashes. And then you just click here and then start presentation. And then it turns it into a full-blown presentation that you can use use to show other people what you've learned. I also use Obsidian as my content calendar. Here is the content board that I use. I'm using the Kanban board plugin for Obsidian, also free, where I can have different tasks in different stages of completion. And each of these tasks can also be a note. And then when I'm ready to schedule that bit of content or to publish it, then I put it on this calendar so that I know at a glance what's coming up. Then I color code them based on the channel that they're going to or the type of content that it is. I do also pay for Obsidian Publish, which is an optional add-on service for being able to quickly publish your Obsidian Vault or select notes within your Obsidian Vault to the internet, to any custom domain. In my case, I've put my notes on notes.nicolevanderhoeven.com. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see what that looks like. Of course, you could do this yourself since you have the markdown files in your Obsidian Vault, but I just find it removes that little bit of inertia between writing something and publishing it. So while Obsidian doesn't really have collaboration features, if your team is already used to collaborating using GitHub, then you can make pull requests and all of that and track the changes that way, just like you would without Obsidian. Additionally, another thing that I've tried is to save an Obsidian Vault to a Dropbox folder, and then you share that via Dropbox to whoever you want to collaborate with. So that provides more of a real-time collaborating and editing experience. Having to learn and keep up with the constant change is hard, but it is also one of the coolest things about working in tech. Tools like Obsidian help us knowledge workers learn and retain what we need to do our jobs. If you're curious about what became of my chaos engineering notes, maybe check out this presentation I did on how to do chaos experiments using K6 and Grafana. Or honestly, maybe you just want to see how I use Obsidian for D&D. That's this video. Thank you for watching, or as they say here in Portugal, Obrigada!
See you later.